happy Sabbath, everyone. I welcome you to this beautiful morning, which is also the last Sabbath of this month of January. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing the lesson offerings for Jesus. Uh, before we start, I would like us to have a word of prayer. Then we shall begin right away. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we praise you and thank you for your protection that you have given us, Lord. As we are going to dive into the lesson discussion of the week that has just come to an end. Be with us and use us for your glory. May these words sink in our hearts so that we will be enlightened. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, me serving, I am Job James, and my sister is Esther Kemcha. And uh, this week's lesson, as we all know, we have been dealing with the issues of offerings yes. and tithes, which is very, 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 very important. And uh, I like I like the verses that we have been using. More so, this memory text of today. The book of Psalms 116, we shall read verse 12 to verse 14. Psalms 116. Psalms 116, 12 to 14. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? Mm. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto mm. the Lord now in the presence of of all his people. Amen. Amen. These are very powerful passages here. What shall I render hmm? unto who? The Lord. For all his benefits toward me. Benefits, the things that the Lord does for us. Right? What we go through in our day-to-day -day lifetimes, the Lord is always there to guide us. There's a certain quotation I would like to share with us as, as we diving into this it says uh, it's a quotation from the book Patrick's and Prophets page 187 paragraph 3 he says these words the Christian should often review his past life and recall with gratitude the precious deliverance that God has worth for him supporting him in trial right operating ways before him, when all seemed dark and forbidding, refreshing him ready, right, to faint. That time when things are all a little bit shady, the Lord is always there for us. We're like, we are done today. That time when you have a family member who's so sick and you're like, this is the end of the world. Why are all these things happening unto us? He should recognize all of them as evidences that the watch care of heavenly angels, right? Mm -hmm. There are angels always going around, protecting us. Mm -hmm. Do we all recall that time when you're moving on the road and you're almost knocked by the car? Mm -hmm. Then you find that it doesn't happen. There are angels that have been sent to protect you. Imagine all these angels are employed to protect us, mm -hmm. but God does not ask for 50%. Mm -hmm. He asks for only 10% of our income. We are supposed to give more. I always tell people we are in a relationship with God of a, of a business partnership where he gives us protection, right? Imagine someone gives you that kind of insurance. We only have insurance for health, right? But, and cars. But he gives you protection. He gives you guidance, right? And he gives you the providence to get the sources of income. All of that, but he only asks for 10% and then the offerings that we're supposed to give which we are discussing today. What do you have for us in respect to this? Just like you had said, uh, what the lesson writer says uh, on Sabbath afternoon, hmm. says that when we consider the magnitude of God's gifts to us, hmm. we then begin to see our giving hmm. becoming more than just hmm. here they wrote paving the parking lot. Yes. yes or buying choir robes for you and I, for yes. myself, like who is in the choir, we always say we have choir uniform. But our giving 
becomes more than that yes. because of the magnitude that of God's mm. grace and love towards yes. you and I, the mm. way he protects us, yes? Because tithing is returning that which he has given us. Yes. So once we have removed the 10%, mm. we have 90%. Yes. But we need to constantly look at that 90% as another 100, mm. which the Lord has given unto us. Yes. And then out of the generosity of our hearts, yes. out of the magnitude of the blessings that he has given us, mm. then give generously with, with an offering. And this Amen. is what we'll be looking through yes. this week. Amen. Yeah. I think uh, we can start with part Sunday. Oh, yes. Motivation for giving. Mm. That's a very powerful topic right there. Mm. I think we read the first quotation which was given here. We love God because he first loved mm. us. Mm. Our giving is in response to his amazing gift of Jesus to us. Mm. Mm. That is one. In fact, we are told the Lord does not need your offerings. Mm -hmm. We cannot enrich him by our gifts, says the psalmist. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we thee. Yet God permits to us, right, to show our appreciation of his mercies by self-sacrificing efforts to extend the same, right? To extend the same to others. This is the only way in which it is possible for us to manifest our gratitude and love to God. He has provided no other. Amen? Now, one of the motivations that we need to have for giving unto the Lord is the gift of Jesus Christ that he has given to us. Jesus sacrificed everything. He left his throne in heaven to come for us. Now, one of the things that I want us to relate to is the word gift. Whenever we're praying, we have these statements in our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. Yes. Right? Now, we need to understand what that statement means. When we understand, then we'll begin to comprehend what it means to have a motivation for, for giving. Gift of life includes what surrounds the sustenance of our lives. Right? For example, some people have businesses. All that was given by the Lord as a providence. Some people have other people who give connections to them so that they can earn a living and take care of the people at home. But there's one thing we need to understand. God, right, is the one who sustains us health-wise, our blood, our breath. But the other things are just an addition to it. The gift of life he gives us should be enough evidence, right, that we have all reason to give unto the Lord. One, other people in the hospital, they're in pain, severe pain. When they open their eyes, they feel a lot of agony because the eyes hurt too much. When they are breathing or inhaling the air, they feel pain in their lungs. But you, you're living ha happily, you breathe freely, you can walk around without feeling a lot of pain around you. That is a gift in its own. Some people can't speak, but God has given us the ability to speak. Some people cannot, uh, cannot be able to say, thank you, Lord, right? Because of, because of the condition in which they are in. They are in life support, but you're right here, you're moving, but you're blaming God. Why am I going through this? I don't have money for this. I don't have money for that. But when God provides, we have the reason to thank him. Because it is a privilege. It is a talent that he has given us. Do you have anything that you want to add? We love God because he first loved us. Mm. And our response to this amazing fact, in, like we actually told that the only way in which it is possible to manifest our gratitude and love to God mm. is because there is, he has emptied himself yeah, of us. Yes. When... When, 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 when it was time for him to redeem us and to save us, he looked for the best, yes. his only son. Yes. He emptied himself for mm. us. So what is our motivation for giving? Yes, Our motivation for giving, one, should be love for God. Yes. And I've heard this so many times that while you can give without loving, 
Yes. You can't love without giving. Yes. We can't say we love God and not give. Yes. Yes. Because we know that for God so loved the world that he, what was the next one? Gave. That he gave. Mm. He loved us and he gave us. So when we are giving unto the Lord, mm. we are giving out of the love that we have for God. Yes. We are giving because we desire that the work of God should be finished. Yes. yes. We give so that we strengthen those mm. that are in the ministry of the gospel. Yes. The, the, the church workers, the pastors. Yes. Those that have gone out, the missionaries, yes? Mm. And then why are we giving? We have people around us, yes? yes? We have people that are suffering. We have people that don't have what to eat, people that don't have clothing, mm. people that are in prison, and we give towards this, a sense of community. Mm. Most organizations have what we call corporate social responsibility yes. to give back mm. to to the community yes. and this should be our motivation to give because mm. as we read in Matthew 6 31 34 mm. it tells us that we shouldn't worry about what we take no thought about what we will eat what we will wear yes. what we will do but let us seek first the kingdom, kingdom. of God and yes. and his and righteousness yes. and all not some all these things are going to be returned unto us yes. so when he gives us those things when he provides for us when he blesses us mm. we give back out of the love yes the lesson writer tells us that an offering comes from a heart that trusts in a personal god who continually provides mm. Amen. you can imagine you have all these bills and many a times when you look at the bills that you have versus the money that is coming in mm. we are running on a deficit budget exactly. but god is saying there is a 10%. Mm. But apart from that 10%, there is an offering that mm. comes out of the generosity of your hearts. Yes. So when we give, you are telling God that, you know, I trust you with maybe this 5% mm. extra. I trust you with it, yes. knowing that you will take care of my every need. Amen. Our offerings rest on the conviction that we have found assurance of salvation mm. in Christ. Yes. And they are not a way to appease God mm. or for God to accept us mm. or to give us to him. No, this is a way of us telling God that we trust you and we love you. Amen. Yes. I like the question that was asked here about the two verses that were given. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 to 14, then that of Matthew, the one you mentioned. Matthew chapter 6 verse 31 to 34. The question asked, what does God promise to do for us, right? If we obey him, is it selfishness on our part to claim the promises of God? That's the kind of question I, I, I like us to, to crack a little bit. I've heard many times when we claim these, these promises that, oh God, you promised in your word that mm. you will be with us in our going out and in our coming in, yes. that, that, that you, will, you will bless the fruit of, 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 our, of our bodies, mm. you bless the fruit of, our, of the grounds, you bless the fruit of the cattle, mm. you see, you'll be with us, you, you will establish us, we will be the first and not the last. All these promises that are there for those that obey him. Yes. Many at times, we claim these promises and we say, but God, have you not promised? Mm. Have you not promised that we, we, will, we will lend and not borrow? Mm -hmm. But when we are in that position of, of lending and not borrowing, do mm. we remember mm. that we have to give back to God yes. that which he has given back to mm. return and to also give an offering yes. out of the generosity of our hearts? Yes. So is it selfish? I think sometimes, yes, we mm. get selfish. Mm. We quote these promises, we claim them, we remind God of his word, mm. but we forget to actually return yes. an offering to, to the him. Lord. Yes. Amen. Uh, just before we go to part Monday, offerings are there for us to get rid of the selfishness that is in our hearts. Mm. We remember the conditions given when you're supposed to Give an offering to the Lord. What does the Bible tell us? It tells us that if you have a grudge against your brother, they may also put sister, right? Then, do not come and give an offering. First, go and settle that grudge out there. The, the reason as to why we have this thing of tithes and offerings is for us to learn of the humility, right, that God has, that He expects all His children, right, to have. 
so that when our adversaries come, they will see God in us. So that all these things that the people in the world are doing, selfishness, where a family member, one works hard, he has money, but when the younger siblings or these cousins that we grew up with, right, who have been a pain in our heart, we don't want to support them. But God is trying to teach us that we have to give back. And only giving back is not only in money. Our time, we have to dedicate our time. There are so many people in the community here who are suffering, and they are all looking up to God, and God has assigned his children. The pen of inspiration says that we, are been, we have been assigned to answer the prayers of the poor and needy. Without, the, without us taking our part, people will perish, and it will be accounted on us. So we have to be considerate. Uh, let's go to part Monday. So part Monday, what portion for offerings? I know we have asked ourselves this question. Mm. What portion for our offerings? Yes. And what does the Bible tell us? Yes? The mm. Bible tells us that the Lord is our portion. Mm. Yes? The Lord is our portion and our souls, our bodies, our lives, we give back to him. Yes? Mm. We have hope in him. Why? Because he is our portion. The Lord himself. So when we come to God and we ask ourselves, what portion for offerings? This takes us back to Psalms 116, verse 12 to 14, that what shall I render to mm. God for the benefits that he has accorded to you and I? Mm. Whenever we are tempted to ask ourselves the portion for offering, let us remember the benefits. Yes. Let us remember the gifts. Let us remember that which he has given us, sometimes that which we have not asked. Mm. Let us remember that he has still woken us up. He has still given us the ability to speak, to live, to move, mm. to have our being in him. And with this, mm. let us give. Second Corinthians 9, 6 to 7 reminds us that when we sow sparingly, we reap sparingly. Mm. But let every man, as he purposes mm. in his heart, yes. give to the Lord, not grudgingly mm. or out of necessity. Because you know what? God loves a cheerful, giver. a cheerful giver. Yes. So we, we, the, the psalmist says, when he asks the question of like, what shall I render to God? Mm. He says, one, I will take up the cup of salvation. Yes. I will call upon the, the, Lord, the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows. Mm. Now, when we give a vow, a vow is something that is premeditated. Mm -hmm. Yes. A vow is something that is thought of beforehand. Mm. Yes. Sometimes we don't think about the offerings we give. When the basket is going round, we say, oh, I have some pocket change, you know? Mm. Or maybe I was on a border and I got some loose money and that is what we throw in the basket. Mm. We need to think in advance the portion that we are going to give to mm. the Lord. Yes. But then as we contemplate about the goodness of the Lord, may we also ask the Lord to show us that which he desires us to give yes. and the need of the people, the need of the church mm. and the need of the people around us. Amen. Mm. I like the verse which was given here, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 17. People always ask, how much portion should I give and how can I give when I'm not rich, right? But the Bible answers that question. Every man, Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 17. Every man, hmm? every, and this is here meaning male and female, because it's a King James Version, shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he has given you. So you give according to what you have. You have 10,000, give 1,000. One, 1, that is 10 percent. Then, after that, you decide to give of the offering, right? And then it says, there's a quotation here again in the book Education, page 41. Education, page 41, it says, Not as a cry theory were these things to be taught. Those who would impart truth must themselves practice its principles, right? Only by reflecting the character of God in the uprightness, nobility, and unselfishness of their own lives can they impress others. Right? Now, 
the way how we live our day-to-day -day lifestyles also contributes to how we're going to give. Do you remember the history of the, was it the old lady? Where many people came and they were giving their, their offerings. Everyone was showing they're giving lots and lots of money. But this, this old poor lady comes and gives more. If you go and read in the spirit of prophecy, it was not just about the money. It was about what she had dedicated. She planned all this to go and give gratitude to, to the Lord. This goes beyond. If you read in the book of Romans, I like quoting that. Romans chapter 12. It tells us to give our bodies as a living what? sacrifice. The pen of inspiration says that scripture means that during the six days of the week, we have to dedicate our time, our efforts, and seek the Lord earnestly so that by the time we reach on Sabbath, we have been overcoming some certain traits of characters that we have been dealing with. If we do not do that, God is going to count it as a robbing Amen. of the tithes and offerings which he has given us, of which we are not being faithful unto him. And then also, these things of we coveting other people's things. I wish I could have that. And then you start hating other people because you do not have. If you're doing that and you're giving tithes and offerings, you're lying yourself. You're not giving actually the tithes and offerings. We need to be clean in our conscience. And we come to God just like that old lady with a heart of giving. Giving cheerfully. Let's go, I think, to part uh, Tuesday. But let us be reminded that Luke twelve forty eight says, for everyone to whom much is given, mm. from him much Just, will be required. Yes. Yes. Mm. So part Tuesday brings us to offerings and worship. Mm. And I'll pick up from what my brother Job James has said, that one of the offerings we can give to the Lord is ourselves, to offer our bodies as living sacrifices mm. to God. We need to bring ourselves to the presence of, mm. of God. Yes. And when we look at Deuteronomy 16, it's verse 17, but we can go a bit to Deuteronomy 16, mm. verse, verse 16, which says that three times a year mm. shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. Yes. Mm. This reminds us we need to bring ourselves to the presence of of the Lord. Mm. We need to come and, and, and have corporate fellowship with the saints, to have corporate fellowship with the Christians. Mm. We have all these different forms of giving. E-giving, we have the mobile money, the bank accounts, and you can sit in the comfort of your home, like the many who could be watching us right now, and, and give back to the Lord. Mm. But we are saying that the Bible is telling us that three times a year, the males had to come to the presence of mm. the Lord. Mm. And also this applies to the ladies, mm. yes? So let us come to the presence of the Lord. Yes. Let us come and offer these offerings and worship with the rest of the saints. Amen. As we look at this, worship, true worship, is not just about expressing in words, in song, in mm. prayer, our thankfulness yes. and gratitude to God but it is also bringing a thankful offering, mm. an offering of gratitude to the house of the Lord. Amen. When we come to the temple, one way of us worshiping is by giving our offerings. Giving offerings is an act, is an act of worship. Yes. As God's children, let us take responsibility of this, of managing God's business as we are still here on earth. Mm. to give towards the advancement of this work, of his work, mm. to give towards the needy. As we go on through the lesson, realize that it is also important that we give towards those that are in need. Mm. And, and, and as we do this, it is, it is hard for us to imagine that we, many at times, we are, even with the numerous blessings that God has given us, mm. we come empty-handed. Yes. We have fallen. I, for one, have fallen a culprit to this very mm. many times. Yes. But the children of the, the Israelites, they could not go to these feasts mm. empty-handed. Yes. They had to plan. When we, look, when we read through Leviticus 23, God told them the different offerings. Mm. 
offer an offering, offer an offering at the Feast of Tabernacles, at the, at the Passover, at the, at the Feast of Tents, offer an mm. offering. Yes. Come to God with an offering. Mm. May, my prayer is that God will enable us to give back to the Lord Amen. and to give back with a cheerful heart. Amen. Yes. Uh, I think we can go to the next, next day. The part Wednesday, mm. it talks about uh, God takes note of our offerings. Yes. And this one we are going to read, Brother Job James, you can read Mark 12, 41 to 44. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, verse 41 to 44. And it says, And Jesus sat over against the treasury, and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury, and many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a fatten. Right? And he said unto him, his disciples, and, sorry, and he called unto him his disciples, and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. What we learn from this story is that Jesus and his disciples were in the temple. Yes. And Jesus was watching. Mm. And what does this tell you and I? As we have been talking, the question would have been, but I do not have that money. Mm. And the lesson writer asks us that whether we are rich or not rich, what message can we take from this story? Now, the message that you and I should take is that one, God sees yes. everything. Mm. God saw. As Jesus was sitting in the temple, he saw. Mm. And no matter how little, no matter how much you have, everything that we bring to the Lord, God accepts it. And it does matter in the eyes of God. Amen. Just like we had seen earlier, what is the motivation for giving? Mm. We realize that there were so many people, rich people, that brought bags of money. Rich people that poured in into the treasure house. Yes. But what was the motive? Mm. Would it have been that they were saying, oh, this is what? Or to show that this is the much that I have. Yes. Or to be accepted in one way or the other. Or for status. Or for the different reason. Mm. The motive to giving yes. is what God sees. Amen. Because that widow had very little, but she gave her all. Mm. We also need to be reminded mm. that we need to sacrifice. Yes. She could have said, but you know, God, you understand. I am a widow. Mm. I don't have much. Mm. I don't make that much. Mm. But she gave out of the abundance of her heart. Mm. The lesson writer says that she did what she could. Mm. And she was anxious to do her utmost. This quote is from Councils on Stewardship, page 175. Mm. She was anxious to do her utmost to sustain it. Mm. She did what she could, and her act was a monument to her memory mm. through all time mm. and her joy in eternity. Mm. Her heart went with her gift. Mm. Its value was not estimated, yes. not by the worth of the coin, mm. but by the love to God and mm. the interest in his work that yes. had prompted the deed. Imagine. So the worth was not because of the money that she had given. Mm. It was not because of the value of her money. Yes. But it was, it was measured by the love and the interest in his work. Yes. So you and I who could be holding back, because it could be little. Will mm. it be accepted? Mm. Oh, the goal is too huge. What is that little penny of mine? Mm. God is saying that that value is not the value of the coin, yes. but the love in your heart, the desire to want the goal mm. accomplished. Yes. We're going to read just from 1, Acts mm. 10, 1 to 4. 
Acts 10, 1 to 4, we are introduced to now not a man who had come to the temple, mm. not a Jew, someone that, we, that could have been deemed as a heathen because he was a Roman centurion. 1 to 4. Yes, please. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Colinus, a Syrian of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house and gave much alarms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision eventually about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Colinus. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alarms are come up for a memorial before God. Cornelius, a Roman centurion, he feared God, mm. but he did two things, and these are the two things that were noted in heaven. Mm. One was prayer, mm. and two was almsgiving. Mm. He gave to the needy. Mm. So in as much as we pray, in as much as we come to the house of the Lord, in as much as we, 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 we go for mission, giving mm. is important. Yes. Because he prayed. He feared God, but he also gave. Amen. And when he gave, I, I like what the, what the Bible says, that he gave much. Mm. He gave much alms. So as we are giving, let us be generous in our giving. And we are promised that the Lord will give us a good measure, mm. pressed down, Yes. Shaken, yes. running, mm -hmm. running over. So if God is that generous mm. in his giving, why should we also not be generous yes. in our giving? Should imitate him. As we are giving, let us also know that we need to give to, to the poor. Yes. We need to consider the other people in our lives. Mm. The lesson writer says that prayer and alms giving are closely linked and demonstrate our love to God and our fellow mm. men. Yes. Because God says that love the Lord your God with all, all your heart, heart, with all, all your mind, mind, and love the others as you love yourself. yourself. Yes. We give to ourselves. We take care of ourselves. Mm. May we love our neighbors with that same measure. Mm. Thank you. Amen. Uh, I would like to emphasize on the word you talked about, motive. Mm. There's a quotation here in Desire of Ages, page 615. It says, it is a motive that gives character to our acts. Amen. That is a very deep statement. Mm -hmm. Motives gives the character to our acts, right? Stamping it with enotomy, enomony, with or with high moral worth. Mm -hmm. So basically, it stamps it also with high moral worth. The little duties mm -hmm. cheerfully done, the little gifts which we make no show, right? Mm -hmm. No show, which means, you know, giving your tithes and offerings, you're not supposed to show that you're giving. Right? Mm. These things where we're, we're trying to, to put our name and then we put some money here, a lot of money to show that, ah, today I have to put 800 million so that these guys will know I can give. We need to be very careful with that. No show, and which, and which to him, human eyes may appear worthless, often stand highest in his sight. The poor widow gave her living to do the little that she did. She deprived herself of food in order to give them two mites. To the cause of she, to the cause she loved, mm. and she did it in faith, believing that her heavenly Father would not overlook her great need. Amen. I want I want to bring this a little closer since we're already coming to part Thursday. I don't want this to pass by. Most of the times during the week, uh, there are certain things we do. Uh, I thank God I've been involved in ministry some years back when I was younger. There are certain things that I learned that Christ did. That by God's grace, when I started practicing them, it, it yielded much fruits. During the week, there are these things where you move around. We have friends, right, that are not Seventh-day Adventists, but we minister to them. But when you go and you minister to these people, right, sometimes all that you've worked, the things I've worked for during the week, and I know that I have to do it for ministry, all I devote it to giving that. And I believe that God will provide. There are those days I remember you could be seated and you pray to God to give you the strength. Then you find yourself giving all that you have 
knowing that tomorrow he would provide and God always provided. Oh, yes. And this is how this scripture is being applied. Mm. You don't only give money into the treasury. No, 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 no. no. You have to give unto the friends that we have. We have friends at church here who are going through a lot of things. If we can help them, then we are actually practicing these things. Mm. If we limit it only to the process of giving tithes and offerings, we are also depriving ourselves of the duties which we are supposed to be mm. obligated to do. Mm. Right? I think let's, let's continue and we go to part. Uh, just before, there's something here that God takes note of that. Yes, he does. Of the, of the, of the, of the tithes and, and offerings that we, that we, that we give. He takes note of it. That means that when we are giving, we have to give it knowing, right? How we are supposed to give. Just like the way I, I, I was quoting the book of Romans chapter 12. There's a quotation also that talks about it. That when we come on Sabbath, right? We are supposed to come healthy. If we have been depriving ourselves of the health principles on Sabbath, depriving ourselves of sleep, Right? and also of how we, we eat mm. in our day-to-day. -day. We need to seek the Lord every Sabbath. There has to be an improvement. If we do not do that, then we're not giving tithes and offerings. Also, it means we're not keeping the Sabbath. Mm. And we know very well when we don't keep the Sabbath, which means we are liars. We claim to come to church on Sabbath, but that does not guarantee that you've kept the Sabbath. How you have behaved during the week, how you come on the Sabbath day, the way how you bring your heart, your mind has to be clean. If you're still thinking of other filthy things, seek the Lord every Sabbath. Present it as an offering unto Him. That to this week I've, I've been able by your grace to overcome this, 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 this and that. I think that is it for that. Pat Thursday reminds us, talks about the big jar giving. Yes, special projects. The special projects. Mm. The big jar giving. And... We are going to read Mark 14, 3 to 9. Mark 14. Mark 14, 3 to 9. 3 to 9. It says, And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an abatasta box of ointment, of speckled land, very precious, and she broke the box, the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? Now, research shows that, that only about 9% of people's assets are liquid. Mm. and could be contributed as an offering yes. on a moment's notice. Mm. Yes. When we look at the cash, the cash that we have, the liquid money that we have, mm. many of, the, of, of, of what we have, many of the blessings God has given us are not in liquid form. Mm. When we look at the assets that we have, mm. the land, the buildings, the houses, mm. all those things that are not in, in liquid form. So this brings us to the big jar giving. Mm which introduces us to, to Mary. Mary, who came with that oil in her alabaster oil. Now, it is said that Mary's gift was worth 300 denarii. Imagine. And this is close to a full year's wages. Mm. And this was a big jar gift. Imagine bringing your entire wealth, what you have worked for, for one whole year, and bringing it to the foot. Of the cross mm. and he brought it and she brought it and poured it mm. at, and washed Jesus's feet mm. but then we have other people that were in that audience mm. that looked at it as a waste couldn't this money mm. have been given to the poor mm. but the lesson writer reminds us that it takes real love mm. and commitment to make those big jar gifts mm. because this is a lot of money this is expensive and 
when we get our money from our investments, we have seen people in the Bible who would sell their land. When we, when we look at um, Acts 4.36 verse 7, we were, given, we were given an example of a big jar offering. Yeah? Yes. When, when, when the land was sold and all this money was brought into the advancement mm. of the work of God. Yes. yes. But we also know that there are some of us that are greedy. Mm. And in this case, Judas was the greedy one here, yes. who asked why wasn't this money given to the poor. Mm. But when we get greedy like Judas, then we sell our souls for next to nothing. Mm. Because we know that after all this was given on verse 9, mm. Judas, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priests to betray him mm. unto them. And he was promised to be given money. And how much was he given? 30 pieces of silver. Mm. So when we are not giving our entire selves, just mm. like Mary, just mm. like Barnabas, yes. who gave their livelihoods, who gave those big jar offerings, out of love and commitment, we give unto the Lord. Mm. But we could be greedy and actually give our lives mm. and sell our souls for something that is next, next mm. to nothing. Mm. So let us ask ourselves, how much do we give God? Mm. But also, before we look, you could ask yourself, like, as I read this, I was like, so do I, where is that land that mm. I'm going to sell uh -huh. and give God, mm. right? Yes. But the question is, the time that God has given you, time is an important resource. Mm. How much time do we spend with God? Yes. How much time do we spend in reading the Bible, in studying the Word, in praying? Mm. in ministry mm. that could be your big jar offering. Mm. Let us pray and ask God to show us the big jar offerings mm. that he wants us to bring to him. Amen. Amen. Something just uh, that really caught my attention here. One, what this lady did and who this lady was, right? We know that this lady was not a clean person. She was counted as an abomination to the society, right? But Jesus showed her the love of God. Most of the times we have friends who are too much into the world. They are doing so, all sorts of dirty things. How do we present ourselves to them? And how do we treat them? We have this behavior that the Jews had as a Christian, of, or as modern Christians, as Seventh-day Adventists, where if someone is, uh, is not constantly coming to church on Sabbath, right? If someone does not have the same beliefs as we do, we look at them as outcasts. But Jesus had know that. He didn't have those kinds of things, rather. One thing we need to understand is, what does it mean when the Bible says that God has no respects of persons? God does not care how rich you are. He does not care how sinful you are. And so should we. Because we are his what? His workmanship. We are supposed to be core workers with God, not anniversaries of the heavenly mission. The mission of heaven is so that all may be what? May be saved. But Jesus accepted this lady's gratitude. And do you know why even this lady did what she did? It's because everyone undermined her. The Jewish people saw, saw her as a disease, like cancer or leprosy. That's how they saw her, that no one should get attached to her. If you get attached to her, you're going to contact that virus. But Jesus saw her as a soul that needs saving. Amen. Amen. That is how we should look at people when we are going to do our ministry. And when she saw, and Jesus has been there for her countless times, showing her the love of God regardless of who she was, that's why when she came, she's like, of all the people here, this man looked at me as a, as, a, as a soul that needs saving and as a soul that is worth saving. Because for her, for herself, she thought I'm not worth saving because of how the members of the church treated her. She was treated as someone who's useless, like you're not worth living. But because of that love that Christ showed her, she came and showed or expressed her gratitude and power that ointment on him. And it was very expensive. That is lesson one. We should not undermine people, but we should support them to come back to the faith. Amen. Those people that have not been coming to church, check on them. There are people who are sick. 
There are people who are going through a lot of depression. If we do not support these people, then we claim to be giving tithes and offerings. We are lying ourselves. That is lesson one. The last lesson is, which is lesson two. Um, Judas, if you go read in the book, Deserve Ages, I mean, uh, from the book, Councils, uh, Christ of Your Lessons, that Judas was fond of taking money from the treasury. So he saw that thing was a lot of money. He was going to really make a lot of profits. He was going to take the money from the treasury. And we have those people in churches today. They will say, that, why are we wasting all that money? When it's going for ministry, they don't want. But they want that money for their own selfish needs. But he wanted to cover it with the fact that, why are we, why are we wasting all these resources? Yet his motives were wrong. And that was his behavior. That was not the only time. Spirit of Prophecy says that there are some times which these things happen that even God saw no need for them to write it down in the Bible. That was his behavior. He had that issue with, of taking money from the treasury. When people give a lot, he would be like, oh, we don't have enough money in the treasury. When he has already taken part of the money. That's why you find when Jesus was preaching, he said that the tax collectors, right, should give, right, should give faithfully and they should also not take what does not belong to them. He was trying to rebuke such, such kind of behaviors. So, in conclusion, on, on, on this part of Thursday, we should always remember that giving, right, in word is also important. The way how we speak to people. How do we give back the love that God has given us? I always tell people that Christ died for us, yes. That is, that is where this lesson is best. But the question is, how do we show, right, the love that he has given us if we have not received it? We have to receive the gift. The Bible says, for God gave his only begotten son, right? When, imagine I give you this Bible. This is the word of God, right? If you don't receive it, how are you going to benefit? If I give you food, the Bible is, 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 is reflected, uh, uh, is represented as, as food, right? Bread. If I give you and you do not eat, what happens? Your body will not be nourished. So that is also what it means. If we do not take this word seriously, and we do not read the examples of Jesus Christ, then we will not have no impact to the people around us. Then it is useless. Even though you give tithes and offerings, and you do not fulfill your duties as an employee of the heavenly Ghana, then what are we doing? Let us know that as it is written in Ellen G. White Testimonies for the Church, Volume 2, page 518, that the heavenly record book of remembrance also mm. takes the notes, yes. also notes the financial faithfulness of God's family members. Yes. The recording angel makes a faithful record of every offering dedicated to God and put yes. into the treasury, mm. and also of the final results yes. of the means thus bestowed. Mm. The eye of God, the eye of God takes cognizance mm. of every farthing, every small thing yes. that is devoted to his cause, mm. and of the willingness or reluctance of the giver. Yes. God sees when we willingly give. God sees when we reluctantly give. Mm. And Galatians 6, 7 reminds us that let us not be deceived mm. because God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that he also shall reap. Mm. So when we give, let us give with a generous heart yes. and let us know that God is our provider. Yes. He, he gives us and he provides according to his riches in yes. glory. Amen. We're going to humble ourselves and pray. Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this day and we thank you so much for the life. We thank you so much for the blessings that you have given towards us. And what shall we render for all these benefits? There is nothing we can do, there is nothing that we can give that could ever repay for that that we have given. But Father, we come before you with thankfulness. We come before you with gratitude for the blessings that you have given us. Give us hearts that are ready and willing to pour out that which you have bestowed upon us. Give us hearts that give generously to the cause of the advancement of your work and to the, to the cause of those in need in our communities. Above all, Father, may we give our lives as living sacrifices to you, O oh God. I pray that constantly you will remind us, give us hearts that are receptive to hear this and to give towards your work. 
Forgive us where we have gone wrong. Forgive us where we have robbed you in tithes and offerings, Father Lord, and give us victory over this. This is my humble prayer. In the name of Jesus, I've prayed. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Amen. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. Turn to your neighbor, give them a handshake, a smile. Okay, you may not smile, but give them a handshake and uh, wish them a happy Sabbath. Let me see how you do it, huh? Please don't smile. Just give them a handshake. You guys are disobedient, huh? I'm happy to be with you this Sabbath, and I welcome all of you, each person, welcome. The guests among us, those who are not members of Mount Olives, you are welcome. I also want to welcome members of other churches that have chosen to worship with us this day. You are all welcome. We are your brothers and sisters. I welcome our friends who are joining and following us online. Thank you for joining us. I pray that you'll be blessed by the praise and worship this Sabbath. All right. Before we begin, let me invite you to humble yourselves and we pray. Let us pray. Merciful Father in heaven, today is a wonderful day because it's a Sabbath. Today is a wonderful day because it's a day for holy convocation. 
Today is a Sabbath day because we are sure that we are meeting with you and all the angels, Lord. I pray that as we dwell in your presence, we shall experience the fullness of joy. May you, Lord, bless our praise, bless our worship, lead several our friends who are still coming to join us, and together may we draw near and closer unto you. In Jesus' name I pray. Today is a Thanksgiving Sabbath, right? How many years? 14. 14 years. There's a text in the Bible in the book of Psalms, 103, verse 1 and 2, which says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Today we want to praise the Lord, and we don't want, we want to remember all his benefits for the 14 years. How great the Lord has been unto us. Let us start with that powerful hymn, 86, which says, How great thou art. And if the Lord has been great unto you for the past 14 years, why don't you give it a mighty shout as we praise uh, the Lord? Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the walls thy hands have made I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout thy universe displayed For us give it a mighty shout then sing my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how I wander and hear the bars sing swiftly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, I might just shout now. And sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. Is alone the next stanza. Gentlemen, sing the next line. That on the cross, my pardon gladly bearing a bled and die. us now the chorus mm, then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee
when Christ shall come. We want. Oh, my blood, may yeah, that was nice. And take me home. Show the joy. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I look, bow, humble yourself in humble adoration. Proclaim it. You might just shout, how great thou, great thou art, then sings, my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, then sings, my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Praise the Lord. Indeed, the Lord has been great to Mount Olives, right? When I look, when I returned in January, I looked at all the young, the, the kids I left little and were all old. Actually, I had to ask some of them, who is your dad, who is your mother, in order to understand who they were, because they were all grown. Not so. The Lord has been increasing our numbers every now and then. Ooh, the Lord has been great. Song 560 says, let some things now living a song of thanksgiving. Is that what he says? What does it say? Let all things, I thought some things. So if you're among all the things, let us give a song of thanksgiving to our Father. 560. We go. Let all things now living a song of thanksgiving to God the Creator triumphantly raise who fashioned and made us protected and stayed us who guided us on to the in the book of Lamentations which says it is of the Lord mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions do what? 
fail not. They are new everywhere. Every morning, great is thy faithfulness. Let me tell you, the Lord has been faithful unto Mount Olives 14 years now. 14 years, he has been faithful every morning, every evening unto us. Why don't we sing song 100? Great is thy faithfulness. me pray. I only want to speak to someone who has really seen the faithfulness of the Lord in the past 14 years. And you have a testimony that the Lord has been faithful in your life. Without the piano, can we sing that chorus one more time? Great is thy only someone who believes the Lord has been faithful to them. And give it a, a shout. Mm, morning, morning, new morning. 
mercies I see. All you have needed, the Lord has provided. Have needed thy hand has pro. Give it a mighty shout. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, to me. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, we have reached this far by the grace of the Lord. And it's been amazing the journeys that we have had to pass through. We've had the, the hills, but we've also had the valleys. But the grace of the Lord has been sufficient. Not so. Before we sing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Uh, the owners of these vehicles, UBB 549M, UAX 8560T, UAY 121D, UG 2505S. You are requested uh, to go to where your vehicles have been parked. Thank you. 108 Amazing Grace. Indeed, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing journey. And it's only the grace of the Lord. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was, was lost, but now I am found, was blind. Gentlemen, I the next stanza. behind us than what we have in the future. yourselves a big amen. amen. Psalms 116 verse 12 asks a question, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? The question is, what shall you render for the blessings, for the protection, for the mercies of the Lord 14 years as Mount Olives? What? Verse 16, give, uh, 14 gives the answer and says, <clears throat> I will pay my vows unto the Lord 
now in the presence of all his people. Now the only way we can, one of the ways we can uh, do this is uh, if the Lord himself guides us. Yes, if he does what, my friend? Guides us. Him 538 says, guide me all, thou great Jehovah. We need him to guide us so that we can render our benefits unto him. Let us sing that song. 538. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Before I greet you, I want to first blackmail you and warn you that I'm about to greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> only one person got it. I said Jesus and only one person responded. You know, before I came here, I was warned that Ugandans are not responsive. <laughs> but I should not get discouraged. They hear you. <laughs> now, let's go again. Let's try again. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. May the good Lord bless you. Uh, this is the time when we, we read our announcements. And... Uh, before I read the announcements, like we usually do it here, we welcome the visitors, isn't it? Yes. When you look in front here, I think all these are visitors. You're most welcome. And thank you for accepting to come and worship with us. And may the good Lord continue to use you. Now, I'm going to request you to kindly stand up, please. Uh -huh. And remain standing. Today we'll do it a bit different. Uh, I got names, but let me ask those who wrote their names in the visitor's book to also kindly stand up. If you know that you're a visitor, kindly stand up. 
you may be a Seventh-day Adventist, you may not be a Seventh-day Adventist, but if you are a visitor, kindly stand up. Church, what do we say? Amen. Now, I want us to draw a picture when we will all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Let me request the rest to also stand up and we greet each other while we sing that song. What a day of rejoice. Do I only do one stand? Yes. Okay. Sing the wondrous song of Jesus. Sing his as you greet your neighbor. Mm, in the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we all, when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout. Call us one more time. Mm, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that to be. When we all see Jesus, give a shout now. Mm, we'll sing and shout. The victory. Amen. You may take your seats. I want to take this opportunity to thank the church for supporting the 10 days of prayer. How many of us say that we benefited a lot? Hallelujah, church. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And I think uh, it was a great 10 days of prayer. And uh, may we continue to remember what we learned. Um, this now is for women. It comes from Women Ministries Department. There will be an overnight here in this church on the 18th of February 2023. Is it clear? 18th February 2023. There will be an overnight for women. Gentlemen, my fellow gentlemen, let us support our women to come. They usually learn a lot, I think. So let us support them and allow them to come and attend the overnight. Another important uh, announcement still under women ministries, uh, there will be a retreat again for women. A what? A retreat, and this is going to be away from this place. Some place in Ibugema, you will get to know the details later from the leadership. That will take place on 29th of April, to 1st of May. Does it look like they will go and come back on the same day? So these are how many nights? 29th to 1st April. I mean 29th April to 1st May. Two nights. Thank you, Auntie Ruth. There will be two nights. Now, this is to ask all of you to start putting in something. All the women, please start putting in something. Definitely there will be a cost but what most importantly is what you will learn from there. Again, I'm requesting all gentlemen, the husbands, please kindly support your wives. Kindly support them so they can go and learn and then they come back. And when they come back, we'll have better homes, isn't it? Thank you very much. Uh, the next one is wedding bells. What do we say, church? Amen. We have two wedding bells. I've never seen this. Wow, that means the family life is uh, doing what it's supposed to be doing, isn't it? Yes, uh, and uh, the first one is for our brother, Lubega Jacob. Do we all know him? Yes, he's our church member. Lubega Jacob and uh, Ndagire Priscilla. She's also our church member. They are planning to wed on 14th February, 2023. Church, are you not happy for them? Yes, amen indeed. And they will wed in Najanankumbi Adventist Church. 
Let us continue to pray for them. This is the second reading. Uh, we also have uh, another wedding bell that is uh, for Mr. Mutebi Nuhu. Do we know him? Yes. Our own, isn't it? Yes. And also Gumoshabe Claire. Do we know her? Yes. yes. These are also our church members. And uh, for them, they are planning to wed on 23rd February 2023. Uh, uh, the wedding will take place in Ibunga SDA Central Church at 10 a.m. This is their first reading. Church, what do we say? Amen, amen, amen. amen. Uh, today, 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 today. We know what is happening. I think we've been announcing about today's event. This Mount Olives Church is now 14 years old. What do we say? Amen. Come on, that amen doesn't give me the energy to continue. Huh? Amen. Today is our 14th anniversary. Yeah. Now, we will not stop at that. In the afternoon, we have a very special program. Do you know what it is? Yeah. What is it? What is it? Launch of... Now, do these men, the men's choir, is it from outside? It is our own. Our own. Kindly, let us come and support them. Kindly. Yeah? The music department, I think, is doing well, by God's grace. Let us come and support them. This is going to be their first audio album. How I wish that we come and we invite other people and we fill this place and even outside there. Are we promising to be here? Are we promising? I'm hearing like a number of yeses, the rest are quiet. Huh? Please, let's come and support uh, the main choir. Janet, you have something to tell the church members? Please, this is your time. Thank you so much, Elder. Happy Sabbath, church. Happy, Happy day. Happy so my name is Chazke Janet, and with me is Miriam Banona. We are here to promote the SYL curriculum. And SYL curriculum, SYL is an acronym for Senior Youth Leader. So we are here to promote it and to invite whoever is 22 and above to come and enroll for it. Most of us know Master Guide, but now SYL is for Senior Youth. We train, uh, it trains people that are 22 and above the mentorship of teenagers that are from 16 and above. So we know Master Guide is for junior youth, ambassador, ambassadors, rather, adventure and pathfinders. SYL is for senior youth, ambassadors and young adults. We are here to promote it. So if you are 22 and above, a parent, a guardian, or anyone in that category, a pastor, an elder, and you're interested in learning how to mentor that age from 16 and above, we invite you to come and join us. Miriam is representing, this is for ambassadors, she's wearing as an ambassador leader who has gone through SYL, and I'm dressed as an SYL. So we are both, uh, we graduated as SYL, so there's no need to worry. We are launching SYL next Sabbath. We'll have induction for all clubs next Sabbath, but basically, since we are here to promote SYL, we invite you to enroll. Register yourselves today with either Miriam or me, wherever you see us. May God bless you all. Yes, you can even start today. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Uh, last but not least, this is to request that uh, we sit next to each other. There are many people, so we don't want you to leave gaps. So if a deaconess or a deacon tells you where to sit, please cooperate. Let us prepare for the divine service, and may the good Lord bless you. I would invite all of us to humble ourselves before the Lord as we sing Him 301. And I would like to ask us to rise as we sing the song. Oh uh -huh. 
praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. All my soul praise Him, for He is thy health and salvation. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and we praise your glorious name in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. Happy day. Uh, that, uh, that happy day is not enough. Happy Sabbath, church. Women of Vala, men on the move. Uh, we have we have a problem in this church. Men on the move. Uh, have, I, have I ambushed you? Uh, you 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 can you 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 come and uh, you come and tell them, so that they they run. Come come. They have to they have. They have to listen so that when I say it, they, they all say it like a chorus. Mm -hmm. mm. Men on the move. Changing the world one man at a time. Amen, Amen church. Amen. Uh, I'm here to introduce the people who are going to serve with, with us today up here. But before I introduce the pulpit team, uh, let me introduce... My sister, I've seen my sister here. I didn't know that she was here. Uh, please, Florence, stand up. Amen. She's my sister. She's, she's our elder sister at home. She's the one Enoch Warugembe follows. Amen. Yes, at least, you, at least you know a little bit. Uh, on my right is Sister Julian Sabiti. Amen. My name is David Kalemera. I'm a member of this church. Uh, the one the Lord has sent us today to preach to us on this special day of the men's choir is none other than our beloved pastor, Pastor Vita Maziri. Yeah. When his time comes, we will listen to him and we pay all the attention to him. Uh, let me invite the chorister to give us an opening song. We are going to sing uh, song number 343. 343. <laughs> Sealed my pardon, paid 
the dead and made me free. I will tell the wondrous story how my loss has dead to save in the boundless love and mercy. Sabbath. We are going to worship in giving and I request our deacons and deaconesses to take up their positions. Let's have a word of prayer. Our kind and merciful Father in heaven, as we give back unto you with thanksgiving in our hearts and knowing that all that we have belongs to you, Father. I pray that you give us the best, and I pray that you bless that has, which is going to be given, that it will do your work. In Jesus' name I prayed. Amen. As they collect the offering, we shall have a special item from the main, Makere Men's Choir.
sing that hymn on number 659. <clears throat> Pass me not a gentle savior. All right.
offering has come to the front. We are supposed to have a um, testimony from Sister Samali. I don't know if she's around. We're going to have a one minute testimony from Sister Samali. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Happy Sabbath to us all. My name is Samali Namuka. Uh, last year, my body went through a series of pain. First, it was a motorbike accident, and I had to get six stitches just slightly above my knee. Then while I was nursing that, one of my body organs was failing, and I went through various treatments until the, uh, the doctor said, uh, I had to undergo surgery. Now I had hoped against hope that it wouldn't get that serious. But, well, it did, and uh, the Lord sustained me. He sustained me through it all. So I, I, while I was in pain one of those days, Psalms 35 verse 18 came to my mind that I, I'll give you thanks in the great assembly when you get me through this pain. And I, I'll, I'll give you thanks in, uh, in many people. So that's why I'm here. I, I, I want to honor my promise to the Lord. He sustained my life. It's a miracle that I am here. Even the doctor was amazed that the operation was successful and I'm fine. He gave me. Amen. Dear Lord, as we pray, take our hearts and minds far away from the press of the world all around to your throne walk grace as a pound may our lives be transformed by your love may our souls be refreshed from above at this moment let people now as we come to you in prayer. Let's bow reverently to the Lord. Our kind and merciful Father in heaven, we come before you this morning thanking you so much for what you've done for us. Thanking you so much for the gift of life, for families, for children, for security, for providence, for all you've been able to take us through. Father, we are grateful. In a special way, we thank you for Samali's healing and many others that we have prayed for, Lord. I give you all the glory because seeing an answered prayer, Lord, is something that j just moves the heart, oh Lord. Thank you so, so much. Father, before you this morning, I want to confess our sins, that if there's anyone that hasn't confessed before you, Lord, you'll forgive us. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Put us right before you. Make us worthy standing before your throne of mercy and grace. And as we come before your table this morning, Father, to dine with you, to listen to your word, to speak with you, Father, may you fully cleanse us and make us holy thine, Lord, that when we get out of this place, we shall know that we received the Savior. Heavenly Savior, we thank you so much for the gifts that you've given us, that we've been able to return unto you. Lord, where we have failed to return, 
pardon us and help us that we will be able to use the right communication to give back unto you. And where we have given, Father, may you use it very gently for your work, Father. May it benefit that that is supposed to be done. King of glory, we place everybody who is here before you and those that are online into your hand. Lord, bless each of us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Cover us with your son's precious blood. Surround us with your angels, O oh Lord, that those that are ailing will be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. That those that are in pain right now, Father, will receive your healing in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray, dear Lord, that as we come before you, Lord, that that has been disturbing us will be taken away. King of glory, we place each and our plans into your hands. And we know that, Lord, you will only do that that will benefit us and will benefit the people around us. Be with us now and forevermore, Lord God, as we proceed with the session of service. Father, I pray specifically for the pastor, Lord, that you'll use him as your vessel. You'll use him as your mouthpiece. You'll put his wa your word in his mouth, O Lord. May he disappear, but you appear. May you surround him with your angels, O Lord, that nothing that he desires to speak will come out of his mouth, but that that you desire for your children to listen. And I pray for the audience, O oh dear Father, that as he speaks to us, we'll be a teacher audience, that we will listen, that will block out our minds from the world, and we concentrate on only that that the Lord wants to speak to us. Come and listen to us, O Lord. Speak to us once and we hear twice or thrice, O Lord. And as we step out of this church today, may we know that we met the Savior today. I pray for all those souls that have come to visit us today and are not Adventists. Lord, speak to them. May your word be a seed into their lives. And I pray, Lord, that as we set to leave this place today, at the end of this day, Father, may we know that we met Jesus Christ today. King of glory, I pray for the afternoon session, that you bless it, that it will be a blessing, that you will minister through your people, and Lord, that we will understand you through music and through the different items that will be shared. Be with us, O oh Lord, but most of all, prepare us for your second coming. On that glorious morning, Lord, may we listen, may we join you in the air, Father. May we be among those that will partake of the first resurrection, O oh Lord, and we we'll rejoice with you for eternity. In Jesus' mighty name I've prayed and believed. Amen. for Jesus Christ how will it be when we walk on the streets of heaven and as someone has said when we look for the eyes of Jesus and I'm very sure I'll see tender eyes I don't know how I would define them but I'm sure when I look at Jesus I'll see love permeating through the whole entire body I want to praise God for the main choir and I want to tell you, I have a habit of joining choirs where I never participate. Officially, I'm a member of the men's choir, Makerere, SDMA. <laughs> May God bless you. Thank you deeply for the message. It's a pleasure and honor to be here on this Sabbath day. And I am so privileged because I look around and I see people who are part of my formation. And I think I'll take this privilege to say I greatly appreciate your contribution to the growth that I have realized. And may I continue to bless you as you nurture others to become vessels of ministry for the Lord Jesus Christ. I also want to take this privilege to thank the elders in charge of men and in charge of the choir for choosing to give me the privilege to minister the graces of God through the word 
on a day like this. May God bless you, fellow ministers of the gospel in music. May God bless you. And it's glad that I've seen again my fellow minister and evangelist. Thank you for the fire that burns in your berry for the Lord Jesus Christ. I also traveled with my dear wife, and I take this privilege to also introduce to you my good friend and beloved uh, apple of my eye. Yeah. The glory of the Lord be lifted on high. I want to bring you greetings from Bugema University, where now I work. We want to thank you for the ministry you are doing. Personally, I follow online what is happening here because I have a fondness of Mount Olive, Kampala, and occasionally East Kampala. So every time on Sabbath evening, I peep in to see what the Lord was doing in a place like this. And so it's a pleasure that you have kept the fire going. However, I would like to challenge you again this morning with another message of encouragement. As I was in the vestry, I would hear the person here saying, say an amen, 14 years, say an amen. And people did not say an amen. And immediately I realized that my sermon is relevant. The subject of my meditation with you is despite worship. Despite worship. Despite worship. Uh, David says, I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The, you see, the, uh, the humble shall hear of it and be glad. And then he makes a clarion call. He says, oh, come, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Because when we exalt the Lord, Ah, the glory of the Lord descends. Isn't he who said that where two or three are gathered in his name, his presence is in the midst of them. I believe when the people of God gather and they have the ethos and the power to praise the name of the Lord, the glory of the Lord descends. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. Yes, I believe God is supreme. Now let me talk to you. When I was still a young man in school, university for my bachelor of theology one of those sabbath days it was as good as this one so the people serving that day were from south korea and the preacher of the hour was a president so he was introduced not like in africa where we place a little more emphasis on the titles for him, when he was introduced, they only said he's the president of BMW. We said, Lord, Bogema has been graced by a president of BMW. Those of us who had grown up, BMW <laughs> was not driven by common people. So if the president of BMW is here, Bogema is transformed. So we waited. And he said to us as he opened the, the preaching, he said, we shall discuss those matters in the afternoon. Mm. Someone here was begging people to come back in the afternoon. That was the first time people were not begged. When we came back in the afternoon, it was full house. And as students, you know we have issues with school fees. BMW president here, when he speaks a word, <laughs> life is transformed. So all of us came in the, in, with, the, with, the, with the expectation that this man, maybe will catch our, we will catch his eye. And when he's excited and looks in my direction, say, you man, what's your name? Bitamazire. Oh, you have a new BMW and your school fees are all catered for. So we came back. Then they began the introduction. People were seated. Everyone was excited. People they were, not, they were not forcing a smile. It was organic. <laughs> For the first time, people were excited in the presence of God without being induced. So, the man said, yes, my friend, I'm here. We do ministry in Africa. He said, BMW does ministry in Africa. 
said, sure, we do ministry in Africa and we support the work of the Lord in Africa. So he went on to elaborate. We were waiting for only one thing, a statement of transformation. And then he said, ladies and gentlemen, BMW means bicycle missionary workers. <laughs> we said, pardon? He said, bicycle missionary workers. In other words, they come on the African continent and support the work in the rural areas by giving bicycles to the ministers. At that very juncture, people walked out. <laughs> and I'm speaking the truth, it's only some of us who are in it seriously that stay back. You would hear people saying, and, 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 and. hmm. Beloved friends, it's then that I began to realize that despite your education, despite your affluence, when a disappointment comes, your behavior goes back to the default. And, and, the, and the challenge is that there is no university that trains people how to handle disappointment. And disappointment is simply the distance between your expectation and the reality. And I'm surprised some of you will be disappointed by the preacher today. <laughs> Based on your expectations. But I'm here just to give you a short understanding. That whether you like it or not, each one of us will go through a disappointment. Or oh, some of us have gone through some. But I'm even here to tell you 2023 will bring some of its issues. Because if you read the Bank of Uganda report of last December, it was not hopeful. It was saying it is going to become, a, it going to continue to, to squeeze a little because of issues that are beyond our control. So that means in as much as life we should be hopeful. There are certain things we cannot negate from our experience. And one of them is disappointment. My question is, what happens to you when you are disappointed? That's why my title is, Despite Worship. Despite Worship. Let us pray. Loving Father, you say to us, in this world, there are many troubles. You say to us that we go through difficult, challenging situations. In some cases, our expectation will not match our experience. But nevertheless, we thank you because your word is living and it is full of promises of sustenance. So speak to us hope now again as we begin 2023, as we celebrate 14 years of a journey of Mount Olives. Certainly there have been moments of disappointment. But we want to pray and ask despite, help us to determine in 2023 to worship you no matter the circumstances. In Jesus' name I pray. You see, the book of Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12 says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. And, and many times we would like to live on this side of the story, isn't it? But what happens when your hope is deferred? What happens? Let me, I want to give you only three experiences. One is from history. Two are from the Bible. And I will end my sermon this morning. About 1840 and 41, 42, a man who was known as a soldier, but with a desire to read the Bible, began to read the Bible. And as you know, if you are Adventist enough, his name was called William Miller. And as you know, he studied the Bible intensely to discover what God's promises are. One of the 
text that intrigued him and moved him greatly and changed the course of his view of life was Daniel chapter 8 verse 14 which is a cardinal text for Adventists, which says, And unto 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. And so this man was asking a very important question. What is that sanctuary that must be cleansed? And unlike today, he went into a Bible study and exhausted all avenues where the word sanctuary in the Bible is used. He discovered that the sanctuary can mean Jesus Christ himself. Number two, he discovered that the sanctuary can also represent heaven. Because heaven is a sanctuary. Number three, he said Judah has in the Bible been also defined as a sanctuary, the abode of the Lord. Not only that, Jerusalem as a temple in the Bible is referred to as a sanctuary. Not only that, the inner apartment of the temple, the most holy of all, is also described in the Bible as a sanctuary. And then the earth is described also as a sanctuary where the foot of the Lord sits. And finally, he discovered that the saints of the Lord are also discovered as a sanctuary or the tabernacle of the Lord. And so his main question then was, of these seven, which one will be cleansed after two 1,300 days or years. He began again to study the Bible. He removed them logic with the Bible. One, he says, Jesus cannot be the sanctuary because Jesus is pure. How can he be cleansed? He cannot be the sanctuary. Then he said, heaven is pure, so it cannot be that sanctuary. Because this one must be cleansed. He said, what about Judah? He said, but Judah is no longer existing, so it cannot be the sanctuary. Then he went on and said, what, what about the temple? He said, but the temple is not living. What about the inner part of the temple? But since the temple is not existing, can the inner part exist? And so he was left with only two. The earth and the church, the saints. And so he concluded that the cleansing of the sanctuary will be the cleansing of the earth and the cleansing of the church. How? By fire, the earth will be cleansed when Jesus comes with the glorious blaze of his glory. He will cleanse, and the church will be cleansed by the purification of the glorification of the saints. So from his study room, he came out to preach this gospel. He told people, when you read Daniel, hmm? The days are coming soon. The earth is going to be cleansed. Ah, the meetings were as packed as this one. And William Miller preached the gospel of the coming of the Lord. He even recruited better mathematicians. They calculated. And then they concluded that Jesus is coming by March 21st, 1844. People said, what are we wasting our bank accounts with? Those who had billions of money, the gospel. I like it when people are going to heaven. They can give elder. I wish these people can believe Jesus is coming tomorrow. All of these people who have billions on their account will bring them for the work of the Lord. But since it's still very far, let them keep it on their account. But this is what I'm saying, my friend. The, the Bible says the people, there were not so many. The, the people galvanized. Then there was another group which was waiting to see whether it would be true. They didn't believe, but they were saying, suppose. So they were in the middle of giving in and not giving in. So, March 20th. People put on very well. I don't know whether they thought they were going with those clothes, but they were smart for the waiting of Jesus. And they put on and waited 21st March. They began as usual. Hmm? And they said midday, the trumpet will sound. And the Lord will descend. And another one said, no, don't you know we have our prayers at 3? Jesus will come at 3 p.m. when we have our prayers. 
by three he had not come. They said, no, the day ends when the sun is going down. Mm. Mm -mm. 2020, 22nd March, the day began as usual. <clears throat> Those who were on the verge waiting began to say, <laughs> brothers and sisters, talk to us, what is the message now? The brethren went back to the drawing board and then there was another mathematician, S.S. Snow. He went in the Bible and discovered they had made a mistake, a small one. <laughs> because Jesus was supposed to come on the day of atonement, which happens in the autumn. And that means we were wrong. So the true, actual, 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 accurate, this time we don't do mathematics plus or minus. This time it was actual minus zero plus, my, plus zero. Exact. 22nd October 1844. Ha! The brethren said, Hallelujah! Didn't we tell you we were right? They preached again. Jesus is coming again. Sometimes I picture myself in that audience. Have you ever put yourself in there? Think about the emotions that are going through your mind. As you see September coming. Eh? Ah, even the rate of eating reduces. I, <laughs> if I was eating a kilo, I go on reducing because I'm going for heavenly meals. <laughs> and guess what? October 20th. The town was in a hype. For this time, those who were on the verge be became a little afraid. But these guys, maybe this time they are very... You, you people, hmm, let me tell you. 22nd came. It began as today. People met like we have met. They sang hymns. To God be the glory. Great things he has. And as they were finishing that one, someone said, no, that is now for the old earth. When he cometh, when he cometh to take up his jewel. Oh, precious. They said he's coming again. Jesus is coming again. Oh, come. And the entire room was on fire. He is coming and he's coming. In fact, history tells us they sold their earthly possessions. Jesus is coming. Midday, 2022, 22nd October, 1844. Those who were in the garden were digging. Those who didn't wait for Jesus, they were busy. Business was booming. But as it went to evening, even those who did not believe closed their shops. The entire town was silent. Waiting for the trumpet, maybe. Nine o'clock. Ten o'clock. Midnight, when we know the earthly day ends. <laughs> Not even Jesus shaking the heaven to show I have... Uh, mm. It was the quietest of the nights they had ever gone through. And they were, they were gathered in places, in homes, waiting... Then the history tells us they came out. They came to the field. They looked up the sky. Maybe there will be a sign. Maybe like Elijah, it will begin with a small hand. 3 a.m., nothing. 5 a.m., nothing. And when you read the historic account, one of them says he could not bear Turn his eyes again to the daily cares of this world. They long for death because the ridicule they will receive now. Hey. But these people, I like them. They never gave up. Amen. They gathered again. And some of them said, but you see, what has happened? And there were two views. The first group said, you know, we were wrong about the date. But we are very right about the event. Let's continue looking for the right date. So they began setting other dates and getting disappointed. Those ones, I think, died of disappointment. But they were the majority. There was a smaller group. 
they said we were right about the event, but right about the date, but maybe the event, we got it wrong. They studied the Bible. They studied Matthew 25, the 10 virgins. And then they concluded we were wrong. Jesus was not coming here. He was moving from the holy to the most holy. So they said, let us wait for his coming. Among these two groups emerged. One said we should wait for Jesus' literal coming, but there is one that interests me. They were called spiritualizers. For them, they said, let me talk to you about the truth. Jesus has already come. <laughs> but this time, he came in the spirit. So your eyes did not see him because spiritual things are spiritual, eh? And let me talk to you, my friends. When there is a disappointment, things happen. In fact, someone has said whenever there is a disappointment, there are three needs of human that always emerge. The first one is the physical needs. Hunger, you need some food, shelter, and all those things when there is a disaster. But the next one are the emotional needs. People begin by getting shocked. Then they move to anger. Then they move to grief. And then in that moment, another need emerges, and that is the intellectual need. They begin to ask a question, how did this happen? And they ask another question, why? That's why people say, why me? After disaster. But this is what I wanted to bring to your attention. Among those, there emerged some interesting people. Listen to these ones. These ones emerged among the spiritualizers and said, we have to be sinless in order for us to see that spiritual experience. So they began the journey of sinlessness. And the theology of sinlessness emerged. Another group said, uh -uh, why do we go back to work? After all, we are living in 1,000 years of a Sabbath rest. We have gone into the spiritual. So they stopped working that day. And others, which are very interesting, they followed the biblical injunction that we should be like children and gave up eating with forks and knives, and they began crawling on the ground like children. All this is as a result of but disappointment. And I want to tell you, when a big disappointment comes to your life, hmm, you don't know how you are going to behave. You need to begin fortifying your thoughts early enough before the disappointment comes. Let me give you a biblical example. A young man is born and his father dies who is a king this is second chronicles chapter 34 and when the father dies and the boy is still young at eight years this boy is made a king his name is called josiah and, and this young man <laughs> the bible says he was good at his tender age by 12 years he ordered the removal of all places where the Israelites were offering God, uh, sacrifices to other gods. He cleansed the entire Judah of idols. Twelve years. He did not stop there. Judah had never celebrated the Passover for many years. This young king said, for the first time, we will worship God and celebrate the Passover. Ah, everyone said, wow. What a king. In fact, when you read uh, 2 Chronicles 34, verse 2, they said, he walked in the ways of his father David, not departing from the left or from the right. Righteous man. And then the Bible says, one day, he said the temple of the Lord is also disorganized. He ordered a reconstruction, a renovation, and as they were renovating, they discovered a book of the law. They brought it to the king and he said to Shaphan, read it. And the king read and read. And when the young king was listening, he said, mm, I don't feel like we have done what the Bible is saying. 
He ordered a reformation. He set in place everything as David had set it up. And at the peak of his experience, ah, when everyone feels that surely in the same way God blessed David, he blesses this king. Jeremiah the prophet is saying, I have not seen a king whose heart is after God like Josiah. In that moment, the king of Egypt, Neko, comes to fight with the, another king, Akshmesh, at Megiddo. And when they come, Josiah feels it is time now for himself also to be announced on the international scene. So he comes against the king of Egypt. And the king of Egypt tells Josiah, the Lord has spoken to me. This is not your matter. It's between me and Kakmesh. Don't involve yourself. And Josiah says, do you know my grandfather, David? He brought down giants. David conquered Philistines with iron chariots. Who are you? So he came to the battle. A righteous king. And the Bible says while he was in the battle, they shot an arrow that hit him. And he said to his servant, I'm greatly wounded. And they took him back to Jerusalem. And he died. The question was, where was God when his righteous king couldn't God have diverted that arrow for his righteous king? Why was God so silent? And guess what? Like any disappointment, people act differently. But there is a general pattern. We act contrary to our initial direction. So the Bible tells me, and I want you to read with me, the words of Jeremiah 44. There is a group after this disappointment that runs to Egypt. And God speaks to them and tells them to come back to Judah. And Jeremiah the prophet speaks to them. And I want you to read with me Jeremiah chapter 44 verse 15 to 18. In the interest of our time. The Bible says. Jeremiah 44. <laughs> Jeremiah 44. Are you there, my people? Yes, because I want you to read with me. Jeremiah 44, verse 15, the Bible says, Then all, after Jeremiah has given his speech, as the Lord has given it, the Bible says, Then all the men who knew that their wives had burned incense to other gods, with all the women who stood by, a great multitude, and all the people who dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pathro, answered Jeremiah, saying, verse 16, As for the word that you, let me repeat that. As for the word that you have spoken to us in the name of the Lord, we will not. Who are they speaking to? The prophet. And whose words has the prophet spoken? God's word. And these people look Jeremiah in the eyes and say, Jeremiah, you are speaking on behalf of God. But we will tell you after our experience. We. Let me continue because you are not yet shocked. Verse 17, the Bible says, but we will certainly do whatever has gone out of our own mouth to burn incense to the queen of heaven and pour out our drink offerings to her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of food, were well off and saw no trouble. In other words, they are saying before Josiah came, Eh? with his reformation, with his call for them to go back to God. Before Josiah came and they were offering to those idols, they were more blessed than now. 
when a disappointment comes, you can say things you would never have thought you would say. Hmm? Ah. <laughs> let, let, let me talk to you. As we end towards the end of Earth's history, we are going to go through many things, and many people will not have the nerve to take it. That they would even look in the eyes of God and say, I curse you. And what is disturbing is that you and me cannot be an exception to these people. They knew the Bible the way you know it. Even better, they cited it because a young boy in Hebrew, in the Hebrew society, at age of eight, he begins to memorize the Torah. So that by 23, the Torah is here. So they know the scripture. But the experiences they have gone through are spoken to them otherwise. And I am interested in verse 18. The Bible says, But since we stopped burning incense to the queen of heaven and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have lacked everything and have been consumed by the sword and famine. You know, the problem with disappointment, it brings you to a place where you think walking with God is more of a painful experience than not walking with God. <laughs> I'm coming. Stay with me. <laughs> there are going to come experiences in your life that will cause you to believe that continuing in the church of God is more negative and detrimental to your progress than going out of this church. Why? You don't work on Sabbath and there is a lot of money on Sabbath out there. Isn't it? And as you look for the job, everywhere you go, they will tell you, will you work on Sabbath? You say, at first you are very spiritual. Eh? You say, no, I will not work on Sabbath. After one year, with the disappointment and the shoe is vertical and horizontal at the same time, so it is inclined. And you are walking, and you don't see any hope. Then you remember, there were moments in the life when you worked on Sabbath and it worked. Isn't it? And it worked. And then you say, to hell. with God. No matter the preaching on a pulpit like this, it will not change you. Not because you're a bad man, but simply because you did not manage your disappointment quite well. There are many people who have left this church out of disappointment. Some of them were disappointed by pastors and they said to hell. There are many ladies who have left this church because of disappointment of some man. Some young man. And then they say, all men in the Adventist church are foolish. Foolish? But I'm here. Am I also a fool? No, sir. There are, many, there are many good men in this church. But when you are disappointed and heartbroken, everyone is... Was it true that they did not have anything to eat under the reign of God? Absolutely not. But they are saying, no more. And as I conclude, allow me bring you another story of a disappointment of people that handled disappointment differently. And this is where it matters because the other ones I was giving as illustration, this is my point. One day, a group of three wise men were following their tradition of waiting for the the star of a king that they thought had a divine connection. And one day, the star appeared. They concluded in their wisdom that this is the star of the king of the Jews. They walked miles and miles to come and worship the king of the Jews. Now, where should a king be born? In a palace. Eh? 
If they say that Buganda has brought forth a king, do you expect to find that king in Vitamazire's home? A palace. And so they begin a journey to come and worship that king. They know how kings must be treated. So in their bags, they put the greatest and the best of treasures. They place them in the bag. They begin a journey which is not one mile. Miles of journey. They were from the east. They trekked, following judiciously the star. The star came. And when they came to the land of the Jews, they did not go to a funny house. They came to the palace. Ah, and Herod, the king, was there. And then they told him, you have visitors. He said, visitors? Yes. And when the visitors came, they said, oh, your majesty, praise be to the name of God. You have a hair now? Herod said, what are you talking about? I've not given birth to any child lately. He said, well, come in, come in, talk to me. And let's go to Matthew chapter 2. I, I liked you to read with me. The Bible says, chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says, now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. And they came with one question. And they were saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and has come to worship him. They came with one thing in mind, worship. And they came to the palace. They thought they would be led in a good room. Pompous in nature. Decorated for the birth of the king of the Jews. And the Herod feigned ignorance of the same. And they were surprised that Herod did not know that the king is born. They said, are you fooling? Are you playing with us? They said, show us the king. Herod said, hey, let me consult. He called the chief priest and some wise men like Vitamazide, the pastors of the Seventh-day Adventist church. He said, come, talk to me. Is it true that there is a king who is going to be born? They said, oh, we have remembered. Let us consult. They went back to the scriptures. They said, oh, it is written that a child will be born in Bethlehem. So if these guys have come, Chances are very high, it is true. Herod said, oh. He said to them, go find him. Go find him. When you find him, even me. I, hmm, I, have, I, I have been enticed. Now I'm excited. I also want to worship like you. <laughs> even me. And the Bible says that when they came to Pharaoh's uh, house, the star disappeared. And God was saying, it's not here. But when they walked out, God is so merciful that on our journey, there is always a star. And that star will always lead us home. If we choose to pay attention, there is always a star on the journey. Uh, let me talk to you. No matter how gruesome the journey is, it might be long and it might be tardy, but the star will always be in the sky. If you dare to look up, the star will be there. And when they came out, the star was there. And they thought they were going to another palace. And the star led them to a very funny place. Led them to a stable. They said, what kind of king is this one? Is he an animal? What kind of thing is this? And the Bible says, why they were at the door? They saw people in there. And my Bible says they moved in. They moved in. Ah. Ah, the Greek word there says, they, your Bible says they saw eh, a child. That the, he, the Greek word says, they perceived, they looked at the child. And their aim was to perceive whether this is the king or not. 
And the Bible says, when they looked at the child, I don't know what struck them. Maybe the presence of God gave them a clear indication, despite the environment, this is the king of kings. Uh, the Bible tells me, once they perceived, Mm. Their expectation and their disappointment was nothing because they were not looking for a place. They were looking for a person. Yeah. Ah, let me talk to you, my friends. The best way to handle a disappointment is not to look at the circumstances, not to look at the things that have gone on, but to look for the person, and that person is Jesus in the circumstances. When Jesus is in this picture, Despite the storm. Ah. Hmm. Can I conclude now? Hmm. They were disappointed. Jesus was not in a palace. He was in a stable. At this point, my thinking was, they will, if they had brought four cups of gold, they would give one because of the nature of the stable, isn't it? It's like coming here, and then they say we are soliciting for money to build. You look at the environment. Ah, these ones deserve one million. But if it is in Serena, the environment, the class, there even your hand goes without thinking. <laughs> and you realize that the environment demands 50 million. So you say, I will give 50 million. But when you come to a ramshackled building like this, you feel one million is too much. Ah, do you know, the church of God, you people, you are too disappointed with this church that you are no longer giving to this church. And this is the reason. And you hear some people say, where does our money go? Isn't it? It's misused. Hmm? What happens when you are disappointed with the pastor? Will it affect your worship? Am I talking to you? 2023. It's my prayer that despite the pastor's failure, despite the corporate nature of your church, maybe it's not looking as you want it to look. Despite all that, I pray you determine to worship. Mm. Ah. They said, we brought four cups of gold. Even if he's in a manger, he's a king. And he deserves all. And so they opened their treasure box and they brought their treasures, everything, they are all, their gift, their talent, their time. Despite, they brought it to the table for the Lord. Someone is wondering why is the pastor talking to us like that? It's, it's undeniable. Mount Olive went through a disappointment. Can I talk to you? I was here in part when people were soliciting money to build that church. They were put in bands. People stretched beyond their capacity to roof that thing. They stretched. I remember I preached to someone when we were almost. I remember I was even taken up to show me where by the grace of God the studio is going to be where I will come. I got excited. I said I'm coming. Hallelujah. They showed me how it's going to look like. I remember Elder Stephen promoting and, and, and the team. There is a video. Sometimes I look at it and say, bring, we are going to roof this church. Hallelujah. And people stretched. They stretched. They pull out everything they got. And lo and behold, at the point of our celebration, at the point of our jubilation, the entire effort, entire effort came crumbling down. And in the midst of that, people began to ask why. Some people felt that maybe there was not enough supervision. Maybe the plan was not good enough. I tell you, all those are nothing. 
It only came to measure up whether you have the capacity to bounce back. Whether you have the capacity to worship despite the disappointment. And many of you, since that day, you can check, you have not been as elaborate in your giving and in your service as you were. And chances are that that disappointment affected you in one way or another. And until you get to the knees and begin to look for Jesus in the journey, to get to know that despite the loss, Jesus gave us very good fond memories as we worshipped under that place. That despite the journey, despite the loss, God permitted that all of you were out of that church before it would come down. There is our star. It shows us that God is still in this thing. And that we can keep on worshipping. We can keep on praising despite the great loss. We will mobilize ourselves again bring every treasure again and give it not to a person but to Jesus the King. I pray my friends 2023 is going to rock you maybe. It might come with its issues but the Lord asked me to tell you don't be phased. Don't lose heart. Look unto heaven for that's where your help comes from. And God will see us through despite the circumstances. But if you want to continue through despite the circumstances, worship despite the circumstances. And I want to end my friend with David. David says in Psalm 69, he says these words that move my heart. David says, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep ma. Where there is no standing, David has come to that place where he is somewhere where he feels it's impossible to stand. He says, it's not only that. I have come into deep waters where the floods overwhelm me. I am weary with my crying. My throat is dry. My eyes fail while I wait for God. Have you been in that place where you wait for God and you feel? <laughs> you can't take in one more step. You've been there. If you have not been there, I tell you it's a Christian experience. You'll be there. But when you get there, the question is, what will you do? I want to propose, keep your focus on the king. Keep your focus on Jesus. Not where he is, but who he is. Not where he is, but what he can do. Because the Bible tells me is the yes and amen to all the promises of God. The Bible tells me is the spring of the living water. The Bible says he is the bread of life that if you eat of him, you will never hunger. That's what the Bible tells me. That's why David says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And his reason is one. Because God is there. His Lord and staff shall comfort him. Let the heavens shake for you. Let the earth rumble with its challenges. Look up to heaven. In Psalms 27 verse 13 the Bible says, Unless I would have lost hope, unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord, in the land of the living. Yes, he says, wait on the Lord. Take courage. Wait on the Lord. Be strengthened by that. Wait on God. Look unto him, not the circumstances. He might be born in a stable, but he's still king. He might be born in a stable, but he's almighty God. He might be born in a stable, but he's the answer to all the questionings of man. May God anchor us in Jesus in 2023. That despite the devil cannot take away our worship for Jesus. May that be your experience and I pray that he takes us through 2023 with all its challenges. We are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. Amen.
May God bless you and keep you and suffer through that no matter the disappointment, no matter what goes on, don't lose heart. Look up. Look for Jesus in your circumstance and you will hear him say, be still and know that I am God. Thank you very much, Makerere, for speaking to us. We will reach that day and look for the scars. And we will say, Jesus, by your scars, we are here. You carried us on eagle's wings and look. <laughs> we celebrate on the heaven's table. We eat. I long to be there. I hope you will never be discouraged not to make it in Jesus' name. Amen, church. Amen. What a great message from the man of God. Let me see the hands of those that have been galvanized by the message this morning. Uh, Pastor, I want to assure you that your message has been delivered. I've learned one thing, even if you forget everything that the pastor has said, you take one statement home. Despite everything, despite all the troubles, despite whatever you're going through, worship. Kneel down and worship the living God. Uh, let us close our sermon with hymn number 573. Let us raise.
me to say, dear Lord, I'll be what you want me to be. There's truly somewhere, lonely place in our service fields so wide. Why I may live but through life's short day, for Jesus the crucified. So trusting my all unto thy care, I know thou lovest me. expectation from your husband that have not been met, despite the expectation from your wife that have not been met, despite this economic situation, despite, may you worship. Mm -hmm. Continue with the Lord, and therein is your blessing. In the fullness of time, the Lord will come through for you. Amen. May we continue to build the sanctuary for the Lord despite what we have gone through. And the Lord will be pleased to continue to bless us indeed. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Loving Father in heaven, it's a portion to man since the entrance of sin that we go through difficult times. Some are not even difficult, but simply because our expectation and our reality are not matching up. And they have an effect on how we respond to matters of worship. Sometimes we don't give our all. Sometimes there is a reservation because of the disappointment. But this afternoon, through your living word, we pray that you charge us again. That you revive us for 2023. That despite whatever we go through, let people see a people that continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. We do not know what we will encounter. We are only laying ourselves in your able hands. <clears throat> Keep us as the apple of your eye. Heal those who are sick in this audience this afternoon. Answer the prayer of that longing heart that has been petitioning you over and over. May they recognize that Lord it does not matter how long it takes. But you are able to come through for them. Come now, Lord, in this hour. And revitalize our faith. Strengthen and fortify our conviction in Jesus. That forever, Lord, our love may not win. No matter what. May we constantly love. Spend time at the feet of Jesus. Walk on the way with Jesus. And do whatever we do to the glory of his name. This is our prayer sincerely, with a genuine heart this afternoon. Fill us with your spirit, for we pray, because there is no other thing that you delight in as men worshiping you in spirit and in truth. May we be sincere this year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
เมนอาเมนอัลกอาต์ I pray that we shall hang our faith upon the promises of the Lord. Let us reflect on the words in Song 518. Which says, "Standing on the promises of Christ, my King." Through eternal ages, let His praises ring. Regardless, no matter what we go through, despite the disappointment, let His praises ring. Glory in the highest. Let us shout and sing. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King, through eternal ages, let His praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ, the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord. Overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Chorus one more time. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Praise the Lord. Let us do one more song. Let us sing five, five, four. 